Hello students, welcome back again. So in previous lecture we have discussed about the cell and its historical background, isn't it? Uh, again, we have also started with the what is meant by cell, why it is called as the structural and functional unit of life, right? And we have uh, studied about a little uh, description about the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. Now there are two different types of cell on the basis of the complexity, right? So depending upon the complexity. Uh, the more complex cells are referred as the eukaryotic cells and the less complex cells are referred as the prokaryotic cells. Isn't it? So we have to note down certain comparative points. Okay. We will look after certain features and we will see whether these features are present in the prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Okay. And depending upon that we can also understand the nature of the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay. So after that we will discuss about the structure of the prokaryotic cell. Okay. They have occurrence. We will take an example of the prokaryotic cell and we will uh, try to examine or try to understand their characteristic features in detail. Okay. And then later we will discuss about the eukaryotic cell structure okay, in which we will be talking of the uh, plant cells as well as the animal cells. Okay. So here we are going to discuss the comparison between prokaryotic and eukaryotes. Okay. So the features which involve okay, are the such as the presence or absence of the nucleus, that is the first feature is the nucleus. Okay. So, nucleus in case of prokaryotic cell, okay, it is, it is not, it is not membrane power. Membrane. Bound. Okay, it is not membrane bound. So that you can also understand that if it is not membrane bound, that means it is primitive. Okay, that is it is primitive. Membrane bound. Okay, comma the genetic material, genetic material is. Genetic material is not. It is uh, basically the genetic material is uh, folded, okay, or it is uh, having. Genetic material is having one or more, one or more foldings, one or more foldings, okay, without. Or yes, without the stone proteins, without the stone proteins. Okay, so that means nucleus it is not membrane bound. First of all, okay, that means there is a no, there is no presence of the nuclear envelope around it. Yesterday we have discussed in previous lecture we have discussed about the presence or absence of nuclear envelope. Correct. Right? So we have, they don't have nuclear envelope. Now one more thing I would like to tell you, when we talk of the genetic material, okay, generally genetic material in most of the organism it is in the form of DNA. In some organism we found it is also RNA. Um, it may be double stranded DNA or single stranded DNA, right? So depending upon the uh, organization of that particular organism. But here, in most of the cases we found that or we uh, see that the DNA, okay, it, it has a longer stretch, okay. The length of the DNA will stretch, it is too far, but it is highly condensed form, okay. It is highly coiled and highly condensed structure is there, which is formed within the nucleus, okay. So when it is formed within the nucleus, that means uh, what we see is, how the condensation takes place by means of a protein, okay. So there is a presence of a protein called histone, okay, which is supposed to condense the chromatic fiber in such a way that that nucleus or within the nucleus it will be fit, okay, in the form of chromatin fiber, okay, or the, in the form of chromosomes. So basically the chromosome fiber uh, or the chromatin fiber will be stretched, okay, it make a longer stretch, okay. It is also assumed that a DNA, okay, can make a coil around the earth, okay, of an individual or DNA or entire genome of the human being, okay, entire genome in the sense complete set of DNA, that is completely entire complete DNA of the human being. If we join it, okay, then it will make up 10 rounds of the earth, like that. 
so so bigger the dna is but it is fixed or it is being coiled in such a way that is super coiling is here and it is being condensed into the nucleus and we know the cell size it varies from the 0.5 micrometer to the 100 micrometer in case of eukaryotes okay so basically that dna it is being fit in such a way that how coiling is there see okay so it is done with the help of histone proteins but in case of prokaryotes okay the important point is here the in case of prokaryotes these histone proteins are not formed so there are less kind of foldings are seen within the genetic material and in case of prokaryotic cell the length of genetic material also vary okay, compared to the eukaryotic cell okay and in case of eukaryotic cell it is it is enclosed enclosed okay in nuclear membrane nuclear membrane nuclear membrane okay and genetic material genetic material genetic material has more has more than one chromosome one chromosome more than one chromosome okay and the dna is associated with dna that is called deoxyribose nucleic acid okay which is considered as a genetic material in case of the eukaryotes okay so deoxyribose nucleic acid okay this will or is associated with is associated with the histones or histone proteins histone proteins okay that is about the eukaryotic cell or the eukaryotes okay so presence or absence of nucleus on which uh, on the basis of which we can also classify the type of cell that is the prokaryote and eukaryote so this is the basic uh, difference between the prokaryote and eukaryote okay just uh, write down this okay so you can pause the video in between and you can note down the points okay so you can is okay we can write this then second characteristic feature is the second characteristic feature is the cell wall cell wall now what is basically cell wall see cell wall is a kind of a covering or okay or it is a kind of layer which is found around the cell wall okay basically it is rigid it is supposed to give the mechanical uh, what is it protection you can say okay in most of the organism as they are unicellular okay they have to survive and they have to uh, means they have a kind of adaptation in such a way their cell wall has become complex or it is uh, been complex by certain phospholipids are there certain carbohydrates are there okay and what they do is they help in providing mechanical support okay also provide the framework okay or the yes a kind of frame to the cell so cell wall it is generally in case of prokaryotes okay it is present and and contains it is present and contains and contains the muramic acid or the yes murine okay contains muramic acid okay and in case of eukaryotic cell okay it is variable it is variable so why it is called variable see eukaryotes means it is not only about the plants or only about the animals it is consisting of both 
even in case of fungus also we are considering their eukaryote some of the protists means more, maximum the protists they are unicellular but they are also eukaryotes okay we will discuss about the different types of animals or different types of living organism when we will discuss about the uh, diversity chapter okay in that diversity we will be talking of the five kingdom classification system according to that we can we are supposed to understand the different category of the living organism where they are placed okay so in case of eukaryotes generally it is variable what is variable that is the cell wall means in case of plant cell we see that there is a presence of cell wall isn't it but in case of animal cell they are characterized by the absence of cell wall so cell wall is not present in case of animal cells although animals okay in animals in including humans or the mammals they are most evolved one right so here there is a absence of cell wall okay so it is variable okay then in present in present does not contain does not contain muramic acid muramic acid okay now one more thing about it so it is variable okay means it can vary that is in case of animal and plant cell but in case of other also like in most of the plant we see the cell wall component okay it is made up of cellulose which is a carbohydrate in case of uh, yes some uh, other plants or the plant material itself they have the cellulose hemicellulose pectin as their cell wall component isn't it so that can be the cell wall component in case of some of the other organisms okay we can see the presence of other compounds are there okay in the cell wall but not the muramic acid because it is found in case of the bacterial cells okay so in case of prokaryotes so the content of the cell wall may also vary okay so we'll discuss about it when we we'll talk of the tissue chapter okay so next to this cell there will be a tissue and tissue chapter will be talking of the cell wall composition of the different types of plant material even the plant cells okay so this is what about the cell wall is okay the next another characteristic feature is the organelles organelle now what is the organelles see organelles are those these are the cellular constituents okay suppose cell has to perform any kind of metabolic activity we have discussed about metabolism what is that catabolism plus anabolism that is a breakdown as well as synthesis that means it is a metabolism so here to perform any of the metabolic activity by an organism there has to be a specific organelle suppose we are talking about the energy in case of humans or in case of any other organism the energy which is synthesized is in the form of atp okay that is called atp atp adenosine triphosphate okay now this adenosine triphosphate which is been synthesized it can be synthesized by the metabolic activities you are you are familiar with the respiration or the respiration okay what is it now it is the process in which energy is synthesized okay when we breathe inside the oxygen help in the burning of food material isn't it it help in the burning of food material and that food material which is been burning in the sense it is break down right so that is a catabolic type of reaction that means break down is catabolic type of reaction and when the food is being broken down it will be help in the synthesis of energy so that means here two terms are coming that is catabolism and anabolism together we call metabolism isn't it so that is the function of the organ organism okay whether it is unicellular or multicellular for that they require the organelle now where exactly the atp or whatever the energy form atp is a form of energy will be stored it will be stored into the particular organelle that is called as the mitochondria okay so which is referred as the power box of cell okay now this mitochondria should be present in the cell to store the energy apart from that nucleus is there which is acting as a controlling center of the cell okay for synthesis of various types of proteins there is a requirement of the nucleus as well as there is a requirement of the ribosomes 
Okay, I hope you are getting. So this type of cell organelles, if they are present within the cell, then can be referred as a well-developed cell. Okay, so here are actually no prokaryotic cells; they are not well-developed. Okay, so what kind of uh, cell organelle will be found in them? Let's see. Okay, so. Membrane bound, membrane bound, organelle are organelle are not found. Membrane bound organelle are not found. Okay. That is what about the prokaryote means. means what they have, they don't have the membrane-bound organelles. And I told you, nuclear membrane is not present around the nucleus. Okay. Then most of the cell organelles they are absent in case of the prokaryotic cell to perform this function. Now, as we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell structure, there was a structure called mesosome. Suppose this is the structure again I am drawing here. Okay. That is the cell wall. Cell wall is continuous and cell membrane is discontinued because it forms the imagination, right? Such an imagination is there, which is referred as the mesosome here. You can see this part is the mesosome. And mesosome is also acting as a mitochondria. Okay? It is also acting as a mitochondria in case of the prokaryotic cell as it is helping in the synthesis of energy or product, uh, power of the cell in case of prokaryotes. Okay? So that is how the membrane bound organelles are absent. Okay, they have the ribosomes, but the ribosome present in case of prokaryote, they differ as in case of the eukaryote. Okay, so it's, uh, it, it can be categorized or it can be differentiated, that ribosome can be differentiated on the basis of a principle called sedimentation coefficient. Okay, so on the basis of sedimentation coefficient, that is a process by which we can, uh, or process that is centrifugation by which we can find the sedimentation coefficient. Okay, so we can we will discuss about it, we will discuss about the complete structure. Okay, so here the membrane bound organelles are not found in case of prokaryotes. Okay, only prokaryotes. Now, the next in case of eukaryotes, the membrane bound organelles, membrane bound. Organelles are present. Okay, so as I have told you about the certain characteristic features like respiration, we can perform, we can synthesize the energy, we can store it to perform the various type of physiological activities. Okay, so that is with the help of the specialized organelles. Okay, so that is what it is called as. In case of plants, also we see that. They are autotropic, isn't it? They can synthesize their own food material. Now, to synthesize own food material, there will be requirement of the chloroplast, isn't it? So that chloroplast, it is present in the plant cell, right? So it is not found in the case of prokaryotic organism. Okay. Although prokaryotic organism, they are also capable of doing the photosynthesis, but that is a kind of different adaptation. Okay. That is a kind of different adaptation. And they have different types of cells which are helping in performing photosynthetic activity. But not the chloroplast. This is only present in case of the eukaryotic cell. Okay. That is in case of plant cells. Fine. Right? Next. Characteristic feature is the photosynthetic apparatus. Photosynthetic apparatus. Okay, so photosynthetic apparatus, I am writing the point over here. Okay, so photosynthetic apparatus, which is found in case of the prokaryote, okay, so it will be thalamine. Or lie free in cytoplasm, in 
साइटोप्लाज्म ओके अलावा इट मींस व्हाट दीज आर द स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हिच आर फाउंड इन द क्लोरोप्लास्ट एंड दे आर सपोज्ड टू एब्जॉर्ब द लाइट एनर्जी ओके सो आफ्टर एब्जॉर्बिंग लाइट एनर्जी इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इनटू केमिकल फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी दैट इज व्हाट ए टी ओके सो दैट इज द प्रोसेस द लेंथी प्रोसेस इज देयर वी डिस्कस इट व्हेन वी डिस्कस अबाउट द फोटोसिंथेसिस प्रोसेसेस ओके सो थैलाकोइड्स इफ दे आर प्रेजेंट इफ दे आर नॉट प्रेजेंट देन नो फोटोसिंथेटिक एक्टिविटी बट अदर ऑर्गेनल्स आर देयर ओके दीस आर कॉल्ड हेटरोसिस टाइप ऑफ सेल्स सो दीस आर सपोज्ड टू परफॉर्म द फोटोसिंथेसिस नाउ हियर इन केस ऑफ द यूकैरियोट्स ओके थैलाकोइड्स Thalakoids, when present, when present, okay, are group, are group in the chloroplast. Now, why it is said like uh, if thalakoids are present? Okay. Now, what does it mean basically? See, plant cells are the cells, okay, in which they may have, okay, because all the plant do not have. Some plants they have the a kind of dif, uh, distinct anatomy, okay. In biology, we call it as a Krenz anatomy, okay. So that means there are two different types of cells, okay. If you are uh, able to see, just look after the diagram over here, or I am not here. Suppose there is a cell, okay? This is a cell, a plant cell. In the plant cell, we see that there will be present of two different types of cells, okay? The cell will be in which the chloroplast which is being present, in which there is the presence of the granule or the thalamus, and a uh, chloroplast is there, but in which there is no granule. So these two types of uh, chloroplast are seen in case of the plant cell, okay? Now here. As I told you, the thalamoids are the structure which are supposed to absorb the light. Is that it? If thalamoids are present, then they are referred as the granular type of chloroplast. If granular absent, then they are referred as the or the thalamoids are absent, then it is referred as the a granular. Now what happens is light for light absorption, you require or the plant cell requires the thalamoids. Okay, but in case of this. In particular region of the uh, chloroplast, there is an absence of granule or the thalamus. Okay, group of thalamus called granule. These are absent. What happens over there? So there will be regulation of two cycles: light reaction and dark reaction. Okay. So light reaction is that help or that takes place in presence of light and dark reaction. Okay, it is independent of light. It does not require light to uh, be present. Okay. Can take in presence of light also in absence of light because it is a region where there is an absence of thalamus, so it is also called enzymatic reaction. And as I told you, light energy is converted into chemical energy. So chemical energy means what? That is the energy which is taking place in the dark place. Okay. So that is about the photosynthetic apparatus. Few more characteristic features are there. Till then you can note down the points which are given on the board. Okay. So this is the comparative points. Still, few more characteristics are there. Okay. So you can pause the video and note down the points. We'll move to the further points. Okay. So here, I'll drop these points. Fine. Now the next uh, feature that we are going to discuss is about the about film. Okay, that is ribosomes. Ribosomes. Okay. Now ribosomes are also referred as the protein factories. 
okay they are also referred as protein factories or the polysomes okay basically they are involved in the process of protein synthesis okay so ribosomes when they are synthesized generally they are synthesized in the nucleoli so here we have discussed about in the eukaryotic cell nucleus there is a dotted structure this is nuclear ribosome which is the site for the synthesis of the ribosomes and they are released into the cell cytoplasm okay so basically ribosomes they are helping in the protein synthesis now let's see about it so ribosomes they are found in both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes okay they are involved in both that is present in case of prokaryote present in free cytoplasm present in free cytoplasm okay and have have okay to so have 70 s type now what do you mean by 70 s type okay that means 70s that is the the type of ribosome that is on the basis of sediment so as i told you okay so we will we will discuss about the eukaryotic cell and in detail okay at that time we will discuss about the ribosome structure okay that how it is doing the 70s or how it is being 80s so in case of eukaryotic cell it is present it is present okay in okay it is present uh for it is present free in cytoplasm cytoplasm present free in cytoplasm okay or associated associated with with the endoplasmic reticulum or associated with endoplasmic reticulum okay and it is ats type it is ats type okay ats type so basically the ribosomes in case of prokaryote and eukaryote they are present but of different type that is in case of the eukaryote is are present in the cytoplasm or may be associated with the endoplasmic reticulum now around the nucleus in case of the eukaryotes if you look at the structure of nucleus once again okay so suppose this is a discontinuous uh, membrane so here you can see the chromatin fibers are there nucleoplasm will be there nucleoli is there okay now ribosome what they get they get uh, released by the nuclear core okay and on around the nuclear core there will be formation of the structure like this which is called as the endoplasmic reticulum it can be embedded with the ribosomes onto it there will be presence of the ribosomes onto it so it can be referred as the rough endoplasmic reticulum why rough endoplasmic because the ribosomes are present on this and apart from that there is another type of endoplasmic reticulum okay which is without the ribosomes that is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum at such type of endoplasmic reticulum it is attached with the cell membrane okay because it is also been present that the endo smooth endoplasmic reticulum help in the formation of the cell membrane okay so we will discuss about it again in the detail just we are taking a brief on the comparison between the prokaryote and eukaryote okay so endoplasmic reticulum they are the site for the occurrence of ribosomes in case of the eukaryotic cell or the eukaryotes the next another characteristic feature that is the centrioles centrioles 
ओके सो सेंट्रियोल्स जनरली दे आर एब्सेंट इन केस ऑफ द प्रोकैरियोट्स आर एब्सेंट इन प्रोकैरियोट्स ओके प्रोकैरियोट्स ओके एंड इन केस ऑफ द यूकैरियोट्स दे आर प्रेजेंट प्रेजेंट only in animal cells animal cells because in plants they are absent okay so cells are present in animal cells and absent in the prokaryotes okay the next another feature is the flagella Which are supposed to perform the locomotion. Okay, so they help in the locomotion of a cell. Okay, in case of the prokaryote, as we know, most of the organisms they are the uh, what we say they are unicellular. For their locomotion or the movement, they have the specialized structure. Either they may have the cilia or they may have the flagella. Okay, so flagella they are supposed to help in the flagella movement. Okay, so here in case of prokaryotes, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes present, sometimes present, and made up of, and made of, and made of. single strand single strand okay and one more thing is about flagella flagella they are also been uh, no no not flagella only so that is another structure that is there we will discuss about it okay then uh, the flagella in case of new periods is present is present okay and and has 9 plus 2 arrangement okay they have the 9 plus 2 arrangement that is composed of the type of uh, filamentous proteins present in the flagella okay the next to that is the another characteristic feature is the the plasmid and pila plasmid and pila okay some people call it pili also plasmid and pili or the pila so plasmid what is plasmid basically see we have uh, discussed about it i think that uh, bacteria doesn't have any complete genetic material or uh, it is not well developed right because it is not bound by the nuclear membrane but in the bacteria or the prokaryote there is a cell organelle called plasmid okay which is uh, generally a double circular okay extra chromosomal set of genetic material or extra chromosomal set of dna now the plasmid okay it has various functions there are three, three different types of plasmids are there R plasmid, Col plasmid, and Ti plasmid. Okay, or the F plasmid also. So R plasmid, it is for resistance. Okay, R for resistance. Okay, uh, I can write will write here. Okay, so basically, uh, they are found in. They are found in. They are found in many. prokaryotic cells many prokaryotic cell now depending upon the type it can be of different types on the basis of the function like uh, they may be the r plasmid r plasmid means what uh, it is r for r stands for the resistance 
okay that means uh, they can produce a kind of resistance uh, against the various types of other bacteria okay that is the thing apart from that they may be having the coal plasma that is called chisin a kind of compound which is been synthesized in them then apart from that uh, they may be the f plasmid f means fertility factor okay so in some bacteria they present they have the plasmid okay as you can see they are found in many prokaryotes that means some they lack the uh, plasmid that means they are lacking the fertility factor they are unable to reproduce but there is a method called conjugation by which this plasmid will help in the production of the fertile offspring of their own okay so we will discuss when we will discuss about the pili structure in detail okay flagella and pili structures are there that we have to discuss in uh, another lecture okay so here in case of plasmid is present and pili okay pili is also present that is a type of sex pili it forms a kind of tube suppose there is a bacteria these are the two bacterial cells okay it is possible to you see just okay these are the two bacterial cells and so okay it is another bacterial cell so there is a result of pili this pili will form a tube within this tube okay which help in the conjugation is suppose this plasmid it is called as the f plus which is called as the fertility factor that means it has the plasmid over here and it does not have the plasmid so it will be referred as f plus so what happens is by conjugation the pili or the sex pili there will be transfer of a fragment of the plasmid into another uh, bacterial cell what happens is they will absorb it and what happens that there will the plasmid has a capability called self replicating that is it has it shows the autonomous type of replication that means it will replicate by its own and develop into another plasmid okay develop into another plasmid in this way it will also become the f plus okay f minus the f plus one. okay so that is what the f plasmid is apart from that one more plasmid is there okay apart from that one more plasmid is there which is referred as the uh, ti plasmid okay ti plasmid stand for tumor inducing okay in most of the plant we see that uh, certain nowadays we can make the modification in the plants okay we have the genetically modified plant and that modification can be done with the help of that ti plasmid okay so we will discuss about the application when we will discuss the plasmid structure again okay in higher class also it will help you to understand various different uh, functions or the characteristic features okay so it has a great role in case of eukaryotic cells okay they are they are absent they are absent that means the plasmid doesn't have any kind of role or it there does not play any function in case of the eukaryotes okay the next another characteristic feature is the size range size range okay so in case of the prokaryotes they may range from the 1 to 10 micron meter okay that will be the size range and in case of eukaryote it can be from 10 to 100 micron meter okay that is the cell size of the cell range okay the next if we are to the meters also okay in case of uh, that is the uh, or around one meter that is the size of the nerve cell okay it will vary so that is a common uh, what to say range will be when we look up to the cell as a minute cell which cannot be seen by the naked eye right microscopic view so we have this type of ranges the next okay another characteristic feature is the spindle assembly spindle assembly Okay. Now, what is exactly the spindle assembly means? Okay. So, spindle assembly that is required during the cell division. Okay. So, it helps in the equal distribution of the genetic material. But we are in prokaryotes. We do not see the mitotic cell division. Okay. 
denote they don't have the mitotic cell division, so the spindle assembly is absent. Means they do not require the spindle assembly. Although they may show the binary fusion, okay, type of uh, reproduction, but it uh, doesn't have the spindle assembly for movement of or the separation of the chromosome. Okay, so in cell division, we'll look after that point. Next to the cell, there is a part on cell division we'll discuss about. Okay, the next to that is the in case of the eukaryote. Okay, they have the okay mitotic spindles are formed. Mitotic spindles are formed. That means mitotic means what? Mitosis is a type of cell division which is called as the equational cell division. Okay, so that means the, the equational means the chromosome number. Okay, it will be equally distributed. Like we have a 23 pair of chromosomes, right? The 23 pairs will be equally divided into two daughter cells from one cell. Okay, so equally divided in the sense not here are 23 and there 23. It will be like 23 pair and 23 pair only. That means equal from the parent to the offspring. Okay, that is a parental cell to the daughter cell. Same number of chromosome will be there. Same set of chromosomes. That means the mitotic cell division. Okay, so that is what about it. Then the last characteristic feature is the cyclosis. Cyclosis. That is what is the cytoplasmic streaming or the cytoplasmic movement streaming it is a type of movement okay so in case of uh, <coughs> most of the lower organism or microorganism we see there is an amoeboid type of movement or the cytoplasmic streaming is continuously seen okay that means uh, most of the food material which is been either taken inside or been released outside okay or any kind of uh, metabolic activity which is supposed to be performed, it is performed by a movement called cyclosis or the cytoplasmic streaming. So, it is in case of the prokaryote, okay, no streaming movement is seen, okay. So, it is absent, you can write, absent, okay. In case of the uh, eukaryote, they show. They show cytoplasmic, cytoplasmic streaming. Okay, they show the cytoplasmic streaming. So basically, this is about some few characteristic features, students, that will help us to understand the prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cell. Okay, so to understand the cell, we have to uh, take an account on these characteristic features, which are very, very much important. Okay, uh, if you are supposed to be uh, held together with the subject biology in future also, then it will help you, okay, to understand the physiological conditions, okay, metabolic conditions of the living organisms. Okay, so this is what about the uh, comparison between the prokaryote and the eukaryote. Okay, I hope you are getting all this information. If you have any kind of difficulty, okay, you can ask me during the doubt sessions. Okay, so today we have the doubt, means uh, yes, tomorrow, today we will be having the doubt session around 11 30 pm, right? So you, uh, sorry, 1 pm, 1 30 pm. Okay, so you can ask your doubts uh, with the help of Google Meet. Okay, so thank you, and uh, we will meet in the next session.